Hi, you all. Welcome. You're watching your Trade Zone 80 now. This is Priyanka Pal along with me, Snehi Shah. Uh, we track the today's uh, key development and we set you up for tomorrow also. But what a day! A three, a third consecutive day of gains on the positive macro factors and of course uh, for Indian market despite the continued FI selling. FIs have been sellers so far uh, if you talk about the monthly data. Nearly 25,000 crore but what a day in third consecutive row. But must say Snehi it was a day for individual stocks and sectors more than large caps. What we saw uh, Nifty, Bank Nifty both opened at the day's high, highest point of the day but then slipped in from that. So large caps did not perform much. Uh, same goes Bank Nifty also and we closed nearly uh, at days low, but then um, uh, and of course the heavy weight, heavy weighted counts, counters did not perform, but still banks and finance did not do that bad today. In fact, finance counters were gaining in momentum. Small and medium counters were gaining trade today. Talking about broader market, market breadth looks very healthy, steady, small and mid cap both advanced to nearly up, close to a percent today. Advanced decline ratio looked healthy, 70-30 the ratio, and the biggest surprise which came in from. Wix, which show a sharp crack of around about 20%. That was one of its uh, worst single day fall also. We'll understand from Kunal also what do this means and is the because it's a fear index, so there is no more fear in the market. What do this implies and how do how to use this now? But then top gainers on Nifty, Reality, FMCG, Consumption, Auto, these were the packs which gained in the trade today. Names like large cap names like Grassim, Airtel, uh, Nestle, HCL. Uh, HCL Tech and Maruti do looks like uh, is the fear has a fear settled because major of the IT numbers have gone. Uh, Reliance have posted the numbers. So what is in store? We'll understand the technical levels also. But the lose on the losing side, we clearly saw losses from pharma space, energy space. Some of the draggers from the uh, large caps were Sun Pharma losing more than 4% post the Nuvama observation. Uh, many positive triggers. In fact, telecom space was clearly buzzing in trade today. On uh, Tejas Network on very strong numbers. Uh, Voda, so much of interest on street for Voda still uh, post the FPO closes. 11% clearly it was up. Indus Tower on a brokerage note it was up on, of course, CLSA writes that the, still, the stock is still trading at a 60% discount to global peer despite a sharp 150% up move. And in fact, not just in, in between the sector, only two or three counters which we spoke about were from Aditya Villa Capital Group. So this pack was clearly gaining today. So a lot of actions for the day today. In fact, not just this space, in fact, this space. Uh, which was seeing a little profit booking last two days, sharply rebounded today. It means real estate space uh, rebounded around nearly 2.5%. India Bull, Shoba, Obroy, all advancing for more than 4%. Well, absolutely, and real estate has always been a fun space to track, at least for me, because we've been seeing some volatile moves coming in on real estate as well. And tomorrow, uh, mind you, Macrotech developers will come out with its quarter four and FI24 numbers. So, on the back of that, a strong set is expected. So, on the back of that, I believe entire real estate uh, pack is doing pretty well today. But uh, moving on, other top news of the day then, in the primary markets today, the JNK India IPO has opened for subscription. That's a 649 crore IPO, and uh, the day one of the IPO was today and it's going to stay open for the next two days as well. Moving on, let's keep it going with the earnings then because uh, come tomorrow from the Nifty Pack, you have uh, HUL as well as LTI Mindtree that will be coming out with its numbers for HUL. Revenue is expected uh, to uh, inch up slightly on a year-on-year -year basis. On the other hand, net profit is expected to come down. On the other hand, when you take a look at what's happening with LTI and what the street is penciling in, constant currency revenue is seen rather flat and uh, EBIT margin is also seen rather flat itself and uh, PAT is expected to fall very nominally. So largely this is what the street is penciling when it comes to both of these nifty 50 companies. So we'll be keeping a close eye on these numbers as well come tomorrow. So FMCG and IT will be in focus as well. And uh, well, another top news of the day, Interglobe C uh, Interglobe's uh, CP Gurnani has launched the AI firm uh, iNews. Uh, so um, that stock has also been in focus today and we'll uh, take you through more details over the course of the show on this news as well. But to understand the moves that we have seen today in uh, the markets, we have uh, with us joining us in the studio, our in-house technical expert Kunal Botra. Kunal, hi and thanks so much for joining us today. Help us understand these moves that we have seen uh, and well, markets uh, did pretty well today. But on the other hand, also help us understand this sharp, sharp fall that we have seen coming in India weeks today. What does this mean? Why did this happen? And what can we expect on this front uh, going into tomorrow's trading session? Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Uh, so, you know, it's an interesting, uh, you know, time to have India Wix falling by more than 80-90% uh, on closing basis because 
this brings us back towards uh, you know the last four or five uh, you know times when the indavex had fallen by a margin of 15% 20% plus uh, on a single day you know two of those uh, you know last five data points land up into the uh, election years that's 2014 2019 and on both these uh, occasions we saw the end of the event so typically india wix is a gauge of uh, you know the market sentiment and when the india wix rises we generally expect that the markets get into a bit of a trepidation mode or a fear kind of a scenario but when the india wix sells off or gets into a corrective phase there are two data points or two inferences which could be uh, you know which could be inferred from the uh, you know reading one is that either the markets are getting complacent or the markets are getting confident that there is no major negative news flow or even surrounding and that could probably lead to the index continuing the uptrend in the last four such observations where the india wix has fallen down by a margin of 15 20% or so on a single day we've actually seen the indices making a bottom for themselves and then managing to move up higher Uh, be that in 2010 2011 as well as in 2014 2019 so we can expect more or less a very similar kind of a trend for the india wix from the india wix observation today that the index trend should probably be stabilized as well as move into a gradual uptrend going forward as well interesting observation kunal the uh, wix cracking and uh, since you've cited the historic uh, uh, incidents also but then what do it means now which stocks are ready for uh, up move from here so i think now uh, you know since the markets are opening up in terms of the breakouts for many individual stocks mid caps and uh, you know small caps specifically so i'll concentrate on two names first one is about chambal fertilizer that stock is coming back after almost a 6 or 9 month of major consolidation a classic bullish flag pattern at play for the stocks which is to buy with 400 as a target stop loss could be kept at 366 and the second would be a buy in lnt finance again a classical chart the stock uh, looking quite ripe for a breakout and my sense is that the stock should break past uh, you know pretty soon about the uh, all time high level so which is to buy 180 as a target for lnt finance more on a positional play stop loss at 160 All right, Kunal. Thanks for taking us through your picks. Trumbull Fertilizers and L&D Finance is what's on Kunal's radar today. Thanks so much. With that, we let you go. Let's get a move on then and slip into the uh, segment where we take you through the word from the wise. And while well, government focus is going to be railways, this is coming uh, according to Vinay Chatterjee uh, from in the Infravision Foundation. Listen in to what else he had to say about what's on the government's drawing board when it comes to the mega infra thrust. Listen in. very clearly as we see the tea leaves spanning out my bet will be that the government is going to prioritize railways the signs are very very clear uh you know the last two decades have been the decades of roads i am not saying that attention is going to uh, not be there on roads in fact a new massive program of close to 30000 kilometers of access controlled expressways is on the drawing board and a big uh, monetization program under inbits etc so roads will be important but <coughs> railways is going to see far larger increases and in attention and development it is policy of this government is to keep pump priming the gdp by investment in by public investment in infrastructure and it has a very simple logic a very very key functionary of finance ministry had shared a particular detail with us during one of the post budget meetings last year that they have an internal document which says that every One rupee spent on public infrastructure leads to three rupees of GDP, whereas one rupee spent on direct benefit transfer relates to ninety paisa growth in GDP. So, with India having to maintain its track record in getting seven eight percent GDP growth, there is no question that the public investment in infrastructure is going to remain not just at this level, but is going to increase at an average rate of thirty percent increase in the budgetary allocations. year after year after year all right so we heard davinay chatterjee explaining the dynamics of the infra cycle uh, we stay for a short break here but then once we come back we talk about the derivative data so we don't go away Welcome back. You're watching your trades, and now time for derivatives check. So, trend for the uh, future, which looks like for the April expiry, which is on Thursday, the trend right now looks like a mild long built up for Nifty. For Bank Nifty, it is flattish. Uh, VIX cooled off very sharply today. In fact, a sharp crack should be the right word. More than 20%, nearly 20% on VIX. It's trading up uh, at a level of 10 now. 
which were the calls which were active today uh, we saw active calls and then but then resistance was 22500 in fact call writing was seen in strikes like 22400 22500 and that's one reason that we opened at the highest point of the day but could not hold on to the gains uh, put writing where market is seeking support right now is 22200 that happens seems to be the biggest support right now maximum put writing action is at 22200 and 22300 that's what from the derivative side is saying All right. Well, interesting moves coming over there, especially when it comes to the India Wix and the sharp fall that we saw. But let's get a move on then and talk about the big story of the day. In fact, the stock of the day, and that has to be Tejas Networks on the back of the Thamaka earnings that we did see coming in from the company this time around. Stock was locked up in uh, in upper circuit today, twenty percent higher, and uh, it's been a good earning season when it comes to this company. At least the company has swung back to profit of over hundred and forty crores. Sharad has. Help us understand why why such a big move coming in in the stock. What was so great about the results? I believe it's very good numbers in a very short span of time. Take us through it. Well, yes, a strong set of numbers coming in for Tejas Networks, and yesterday also we saw a bump up in the stock price. Stock went up almost 17% in the last trading session. The revenue, if you look at it, that's jumped almost 137% on a sequential basis, and also there has been a significant improvement when it comes to PAT as well as company turning profitable operationally as well. We checked at the order book also at the end of quarter four. The order book is more than 8,200 crore rupees, and strong updates have been coming and the guidance coming in going ahead for the company, especially in the wireless. business over here the 4G and the 5G ran installation that has actually aided the top line numbers and also this is mostly coming from the BSNL's order book also if you look at wireline business two important updates are coming in first is this there are strategic deals are happening in the critical infrastructure and second they have also started going into a strategic partnership with telecom egypt as well Also going ahead, two important triggers are there for the company. The first one being they are executing the largest ever networks being built. Now this is the indigenous technology for both 4G as well as 5G, and also in the rat, uh, route. and satellite transponder so that is something which we'll be looking out for and currently government is also giving a lot of incentives in this segment and lastly they are also looking at building end to end telecom networks that would be margin accretive as per the analysts Right, uh, Sharath. In fact, uh, interesting one. Not just this, uh, uh, the stellar move uh, that the numbers that uh, the company posted in this quarter. In fact, there's a strong roadmap ahead also on the back of the strong order book. But then, do tell us about the daily stocks also, which were buzzing in trade today after an in, uh, an inline set of uh, Q4 numbers from Hudson Agro. What are the other key triggers, and what can we expect from the sector going ahead? Well, uh, this uh, sector has been seeing a kind of a re-rating happening, and of course, we saw the Hatsun Agro numbers come in, largely inline set of numbers. But the important thing is the commentary which came from the management, and they have stated that the, there is a normalcy coming when it comes to the milk procurement prices, and that is coming in after two years. Now, looking at the stock itself, even Parag Milk and Heritage Foods also saw good volumes coming in, and there are important industry triggers for the dairy sector. Of course, the first one is the strong summer sales, and it's expected that this would be an extended summer season. So, value-added products like curd and the ice creams will also be in focus. Capacity expansions are also going on for certain listed players, and the value-added products, if you look at it, especially for private players, that is where they are expected to gain their market share as well. Post-COVID two years, there was inventory issues, but now there has been a stability coming in when it comes to the procurement of milk as well as the overall sales. and we did some channel checks and currently the procurement price is ranging between 34 to 35 rupees per liter earlier in 2022 end it was at 40 rupees a liter so there has been a correction a uh, kind of a gradual collection uh, correction happening and importantly there is a stability which is coming from across the segment now the milk procurement market share that is something which we look at and as per investex report hatsun agro is having 13% of its exposure while heritage and dodla it remains at 7% so overall dairy sector is having a strong run you could say going ahead All right, Sharad. Well, thanks for joining us and breaking down Tejas Networks as well as the entire dairy sector for us today. But let's uh, move on and talk about yet another stock that logged in some stellar moves for itself in today's trading session, and that has to be ABFRL or Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail. That stock ended the day with an uptick of almost nine and a half percent, and this is on the back of uh, the con call takeaways. Remember, the con call was held yesterday, and the management did come out with some positive commentary on their debt reduction plans. And Anshu is joining us. 
to break down this con call details for us and what helped the stock uh, move up so much in today's trading session. Ansh, over to you. Yes, so in the con call, management has said that the demerger of Madhura Fashion and Lifestyle Business into a separate listed entity named Aditya Bila Lifestyle may take 9 to 12 months. They also showed their interest to do court convened meeting only once TCNS approvals is in place and management hopes to close TCNS merger as well in next four months. Talking about fundraising part, fundraise of 2,500 crore to be used for investment and debt repayment, that's what the management has said and they also expect debt to reduce significantly over next two to three years. The exact nature of the fundraising including the type of security is not finalized yet but the promoters will have strong participation in the fundraising program. Also there is a separate funding program for uh, tomorrow brand which is likely to take place in FY25. Also they also highlighted that the opportunities uh, under the Madhura brand segment don't require much capital for growth. They are already in the mature stage. At the end of the call they also highlighted that in next three years they expect ethnic business to be in 4,000 to 5,000 crore business from current to 2000 crore business. So these were the key highlights of the ban. Right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Nansh, for that breakdown. Um, Aditya Billa, especially this talk has been a buzz for many days, firstly because of the demerger and now analysts meet. And of course, not just this talk, in fact, the entire pack. But then Gaurav is here with a complete list of other buzzing stocks. Gaurav, over to you. Well, yes. First, let's talk about Mastec because the company recently won an order from Saudi Arabia's Yanbu Cement and this order is go for optimizing production process using Internet of Things and Oracle capabilities. Now, given that this can actually boost the revenue we saw and uptick in stock price as well. Next, let's talk about Amara Raja because Ministry of Heavy Industries is going to have bids for giga scale advanced chemistry cell manufacturing facilities and given that Amara Raja is one of the players in which can benefit from this uh, auction, we saw the stock increase almost by 10% in a day's trade. Next, let's talk about m, &M Finance because recently a fraud was detected in one of the company's branches. Now, the amount of fraud is not going to exceed 150 crores according to the management, but uh, the the con I, I mean, I mean, the 4Q call was actually scheduled today, which is now scheduled on 30th uh, May 2024. And on back of this news, we saw uh, negative news and negative flow coming up in the stock price. Next, let's talk about Sudarshan Chemical because one of the largest competitors of the company, Ubach GmbH, has now filed for a insolvency in Germany and now given that the second largest player has now filed for an insolvency so this Sudarshan chemical actually has an opportunity to gain market share which could be irreversible and that is why we saw a positive trend coming up in the stock price and lastly let's talk about Honasa because Jefferies while maintaining buy rating uh, maintained the target price to 590 rupees because we recently saw that Derma company brand actually achieved a key milestone of 500 crore rupees annual revenue run rate and after that Jefferies has also shown some positive uh, positive commentary towards the management of Honasa and at the same time they actually like the agility of the management to move towards profitability and on back of this news we saw Honasa also increase in trade today so all in all on back of these news we will keep an eye on these companies because we may see some uptick or downtick coming up in the trades coming ahead all right, Gaurav. Well, thanks so much for that quick roundup on everything that was up and abuzz in today's trading session. Well, uh, let's get, uh, let's uh, talk about yet another stock. But on the flip side, this stock was under pressure today, and that is Sun Pharma. The stock has ended the day with a three and a half percent cut coming in, and U.S. regulator has issued Form 483 with six observations for its Dadra unit. Novama has also released a note with the potential impact on sales. And Trishti, who tracks the sector closely, is here with more details and the implications of this um, of these observations coming in on the stock Shishti, take it away well yes this could escalate is uh, what Novama is looking out for and actually concern about it because Dadra unit is quite a critical unit for Sun Pharma which recently was issued form 483 with six observations and this is a critical unit why so because one of the key drugs that is G Revlimid is being manufactured in this particular plant and Novama is not sure whether the company has a dual facility for filing this product or not and the six observations the details were already out the kind of observations that were being done uh, by USFD and they are a bit concerning. What Novama observation is that this plan has inadequate out of specific investigation, the equipment conditions with potential for microbial contamination procedures issue in the quality unit as well, as well as inadequate field alerts despite repeat 
customer complaints and inadequate check into the product quality complaints and inadequate examination of deviations as well. So a lot of product contamination reports were there for which Sun Pharma was not able to actually go ahead and uh, make these uh, procedures having a good explanation for that and that's why these observations were being done for the Dadra unit and how Novama is looking at it is they are saying that if there's an escalation it may risk the G rev limit sales in in the US and this could lead to 2.8 percent revenue cut and 7 percent EBITDA cut for their FY 26 estimate. So uh, that's Nivama's take on this for FY26 revenue as well as a bit the guidance. They would tweak it if this uh, these observations are going to go ahead with an escalation but indeed a negative news flow for Sun Pharma and that's why the stock is down close to 4% in trade. Back to you. All right, thanks very much. A lot of potential, uh, a lot of uh, potential concerns coming in for Sun Pharma. Not a good day, anyways, for the uh, defensive space also. That was a dragger, and this news came in, which dragged Sun Pharma nearly four percent. But then, what lies ahead for the numbers for the companies which has which have to report numbers tomorrow? Axis Bank, LTI, Mindtree, and along with that, HUL, FMCG Major, Hindustan Unilever will also be in focus because it is set to report its number tomorrow. Winnie tracks it, and let's understand what are the key factors to uh, to watch out and uh, what is street anticipate? Vinny, over to you. This time around from the FMCG ma uh, major HOL, we are expecting a muted growth in terms of revenue, around six-tenth of a percent growth. While in terms of the profit, we are expecting a slight bit of a decline. Margins, so operating performance is also expected to be muted. EBITDA margins expected to see a bit of a contraction around, uh, around 30 basis point. You could say 23% is what we are expecting EBITDA margins as versus 23.3% uh, last year. Uh, volume growth expected to be muted at 2 to 3%. Low single-digit growth is expected from the company this time around because rural slowdown that's still there. We're not seeing a sharp recovery. Other than that, increased competitive intensity from regional players, which we've seen in the last few quarters, those demand trends, that's similar. So last couple of quarters, the trends that we've seen, we're expecting similar trends to continue. Now, what will be interesting to watch out for is that the subdued growth in home and personal care segment, how is that there? Commentary on that part, food and refreshment segment, that's also expected to be muted. And other than that, you know, on the margins, we'll be seeing an impact of the royalty increase that's there, as well as in terms of the incre uh, impact due to the expansion expiration of the GSK consignment arrangement. So because of that, we are seeing that that income is reducing, so maybe some bit of an impact in terms of the margins. Let's keep an eye on important commentary that could come in from the health food drink segment. How is that shaping up? Because we're seeing a lot of issues uh, in the overall uh, sector as in health food drink segment because of the sugar content. What is the commentary coming in from HUL on that front? Right now, there was no issue on their front. But yes, what is the commentary there is key to watch out for? Uh, commentary on competition, regional players, rural demand, and out look for margins and raw material cost is a key factor that we're keeping an eye out on. All right, Vinny, well, thanks so much for that. We'll keep a close eye on HUL along with LTI, Mindtree and Axis Bank. But with, uh, with our viewers, it's curtains down on this edition of Your Trades. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.